Okay, as winter finally wraps up today, I thought I would do a video talking about my winter survival knife or ultimate winter survival knife setup. Now, without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, check out the Patreon. And if you want to see more behind the scenes of Alaskan Frontier One, check out the Instagram. It is always linked in the description below. Okay, so now let's jump into the survival knife. Now, I'm going to roll in some close-ups. I know the lighting isn't exactly the best with the sun directly beaming down on me, but this is essentially the ultimate winter survival knife. Now, if you've been around the channel for the winter at all, you'll know that I've been testing out this Falkneven A1 quite a bit and playing around with it in the woods and really practicing with it for some survival tasks. And while admittedly uh, I am kind of newer to Falkneven because uh, these are I picked up an A1 and F1, this winter I have been very very impressed with these blades and while they are on the thicker side and they are not the most cheap they are actually really really suitable for winter time operations and I would say unless you're going for something like a cold steel SRK or something like a Mora Garberg if you are really looking for the next jump up in price the Falknevens are probably going to be some of the best suited winter knives and you know, their thickness and kind of overbuilt nature really lends its hands to wintertime tasks because you may have to press your blades into doing more industrial tasks such as shelter building, such as shelter building, fire starting, and batoning. So, you know, the overbuilt nature of them actually is very handy for that. And the fact that uh, these things are the you know, base models, the A1, the F1, not the X's per se, but uh, these base models have rubber over molded handles, really make it quite comfortable to grip even when it is cold. Now, it's not as cold today as it has been in the past, but trust me, trust me when I say I have definitely used this thing, you know, in colder temperatures, definitely sub freezing temperatures, and it is very comfortable in those uh, temperatures and climates when you are doing work and when you are naturally holding the handle. And <clears throat> the nice thing is, even if your hand is gloved, the really handy part is that, you know, the, the handle material, since you're not coming in contact with the spine or any steel at all, it's not trying to leach heat or cool your hand down at all. So it is very nice in that regard. And like I said, the overbuilt nature definitely lends its hands to things like chopping, batoning, and more industrial tasks, which is very handy for winter survival. So that's the base to the ultimate survival knife. And ultimately the knife itself is the Falkneven A1. Now, as far as the ultimate survival knife goes, usually when I have a type of setup like this, it's not just the knife. So what I did was, of course, I added a multi-tool and a ferro rod, which are pretty important and help kind of make this knife alone or standalone a little bit more well-rounded. Now for me, I went with the Zytel sheath, as you guys can see here, and I chose the Zytel sheath sheath for one particular reason and that is that unlike the leather sheath I mean you might be able to do this with the leather sheath but I know for sure the Zytel sheath you can kind of modify it to add things to carry things so what I did was as I've done with several other sheaths I first took some uh, bicycle inner tubing which is this black kind of ranger band looking material and I put that all the way up to where the sheath kind of starts to enlarge for the handle and then what I did adding that rubber uh, allows you to get a lot of grip when you add paracord so the next thing I did was I paracord wrapped the sheath and then after I did that, I was able to take my Leatherman sheath and run a malice clip through the back of the uh, Leatherman sheath and attach it, uh, or rig it through the paracord that I had attached. And this thing is solid on here. I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle and wobble because it's uh, still technically a modification, but uh, there is really no play here and is very solidly attached to the paracord, which is very cinched down onto the rubber. And the rubber, of course, is very, very grippy. So I'm not gonna say that this could never come apart, but I am very, very confident that that is firmly attached. Now, like I said, this is a Leatherman sheath and the multi-tool that I chose for this setup was the Super Tool 300. Now, part of the reason why I chose the 300 or Super Tool 300 is it is a multi-tool that I have around. And it's also a really good survival multi-tool. I would say this one and the Leatherman Surge are about comparable in tool set and about comparable in size. And uh, so overall, 
they are really good wilderness multi-tools. Of course, they are on the larger and heavier side, but they are pretty darn good. Like I said, they have a lot of options to offer. And uh, while it's not my favorite that it is an all steel tool built specifically for winter, uh, things that you could do potentially to make it better. And what I'm thinking about doing is maybe adding either some grip tape or some uh, duct tape to the sides of the handle to primarily just add a non-metallic or non-metal kind of uh, you know rubbery overmold which gives you more traction but also makes the uh, handles a little bit more temperature neutral now of course as it surprises pretty much no one i also added a light my fire army 2.0 uh, ferro rod that is of course my favorite ferro rod i have those ferro rods for basically all of my mainstay knives any of the knives that i regularly or reliably carry will have that ferro rod very comfortable with it and i really do like the light my fire ferro rods so that is essentially uh, the setup that, like I said, gives this uh, knife itself a little bit more well-rounded. And ultimately, this is a very similar setup to my regular truck survival knife, my CRK Pacific. It has a very similar setup. And of course, in an emergency, I could always take off this paracord, use it as cordage. I could always take off the inner tube, use it for tinder or for fire starting. So, you know, the nice thing about using the paracord and ranger bands or bicycle inner tubing as the connection method is not only is it solid and it works but I can also take those pieces off of this kit and use them independently so if I did need to say build a shelter and you know string up trees for like a lean-to I could certainly and reasonably easily do that with the paracord that's actually included so this kit is pretty well you know it covers a lot of bases of the five c's it doesn't cover everything obviously and it was not really designed to but this is essentially uh, a way that i thought i could make my falcon even a1 more well-rounded and more of a true survival knife so instead of just saying you know this is the ultimate winter survival knife having a little bit of extra supplies and material to make this knife more well-rounded and more apt for actual survival situations and so anyways hopefully uh like with a lot of my survival kit videos and a lot of my survival related videos i don't just try to build practical gear that i use though that is the initial uh, intention i try to share my thoughts and my modifications and how i did certain things so that if you guys want to duplicate them you certainly can so that's what i did and uh like i said hopefully that breakdown makes sense if you need any further clarification definitely let me know in the comment section below but that is the basics to my ultimate winter survival kit hopefully you guys enjoyed that and taking a look at the modifications that i did to the a1 sheath to make it more well-rounded as always guys god bless and i'm out